What's up? We are back. I want to refactor some of our layout because I found some bugs. And some of the bugs I found were, I think our letter spacing was a little off. I was looking at the design and I think Instagram tightened them up a little bit so that you could fit more characters in there. Totally makes sense. So we're going to uh, drop our letter spacing and squeeze our avatar names together and we'll end up fitting more characters. So that's kind of cool. We also have a descender that's being cut off. Check it out. Oh, look, and it's even like on the cusp. Like if I zoom out, I use that. Oh, look, you can see it when it's not scaled up. It gets cut off. Do you see it cut off? Do you see how nitpicky I'm being about that cut off? We're going to fix it. Uh, it's bugging me. I noticed it. And here, look, if I hover, it kind of goes away. Anyway, that's annoying. We shouldn't be having to deal with that. All right, so we're going to fix that. Um, our sentinel that we put at the end to scroll here. Oh, here, I got to contract this. Let's get out of device mode. See our sentinel that's holding that space there? Oh, look, there's even one of the bugs. So if you scroll to the end and then hover, it's also changing the, the scale of our after element, which is changing the scroll position. So we have a bug here. I don't like that bug. So we're going to fix also this is cross browser. The way that we wrote, oh, look, there's even a vertical scroll bug with that because it scales and changes everything. Oh, man, that is brutal. OK, so we're going to fix that. And we also have that Sentinel isn't working cross browser. So I opened this up in a couple of other uh, browsers and we didn't have that Sentinel. And it's because we were using some logical property shorthand that hasn't quite shipped everywhere yet. So we're going to go write a physical uh, fallback there. And what else do I have here? Um, oh, our uh, gradient here, we're going to add some extra flair today and make that hover so that the highlight stays where your mouse is. Hope you're stoked on that. And then we're going to add scroll snap a little bit in here too, so that when these scroll, they'll just gently rest here and always kind of find themselves at a healthy spot so we don't see anybody hanging off there. Um, yeah, I have one more. Remove extra scroll container and put class on div. Yes. Okay. This is the last thing we're going to do is we have two containers. We have this section and then the, the scrolling area. And we did that in the beginning because we were trying to avoid some bugs. But one of the bugs I was trying to avoid was making a sentinel. We made a sentinel anyway. We made it a little placeholder so that we could have some padding at the end of our scroll area. And um, our nested nodes did not help us there. The padding was just ignored uh, all the way down. So we're going to merge these. And so we have less elements. Now we'll have just a component with figures. So we'll have a layout with figures. And it's <laughs> we're flattening it. So we're going to flatten it. We're going to fix some bugs. And uh, we're going to make a cool hover highlight. I just thought this little hover scale was like a little dinky and left me longing and wanting for more. So we're going to do that. Um, let's get started with, I don't know, let's fix our letter spacing and stuff. Like I'm just going to open up dev tools here. So I hit command shift C. Um, you're going to see me use that a lot. So if all of a sudden magically this little icon up here highlights like that, it's because I hit command shift C and then I'll click something and go. Uh, fix it. Okay, so here's our figure fig caption. So we had two issues in here. We had our descenders were being cut off. So that means our line height is too tight. Um, and a tight line height is going to be an issue. So let's go line height 1.1, 1.2. Can you see it? I can see it over here. I'm going to zoom in. See it down there? I have a tweet that says never use line height one. And this is pretty much why right here is you can see we're cutting off descenders and probably cutting off ascenders as well. Like if something went up and over here. So if we go to line height 1.1, we're essentially saying a little, give us a little space around uh, shrink wrap because look at shrink wrap is cutting off descenders and that's not good. So let's go line height 1.2, line height 1.2. I can hover on our element here and just see Oh, let's see. That's the wrong element. Let's hover on this one. I can hover over and see that. Yes. Look at our. Um, oh, here. Let's use Fizzbug for that then. If that's not going to persist, uh, that's not going to persist either because it's too busy interacting with. Well, that, I guess that kind of shows us where it's cut off. Okay. So if I adjust the line height, I wonder if Fizzbug will update. Fizzbug does update, but look at our line height at two is not really fixing our issue as much as line height one point two is doing. So I'll go ahead and close out Visbug, and I see we fixed it. Okay, so line height 1.2. We'll port that over to our CSS here in a second. And the other thing we needed to do was change our letter spacing. Because look at Sierra Argyle. And if we pull up our comp, let's see if I can find that comp. I don't know. It's somewhere in here, and I lost it. Oh, wait. Maybe it's over here. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Aha. 
Okay, so see how Sierra Argyle fits entirely and Henri Helvetica fits entirely as well. Let's find out why ours isn't. So I'm gonna zoom out on here. The way that I'm doing zoom in this page, there's a couple different zooms that you see me do. One is an accessibility zoom. That's this one, I'm holding control and zooming in. That one will work anywhere on the screen. And the other one I'm doing is just on a trackpad. Um, I've enabled zoom on my page and so that I'm zooming the page, uh, not with you know, Command Plus, so I'm not changing the font scale, I'm just zooming the document. So anyway, I like doing that a lot because I like to get in and nitpick things, right, like that. All right, so we uh, let's see if we can fit Henri Helvetica with a little bit of letter spacing. And let's see, one pixel. Okay, so one pixel letter spacing is gonna be really heavy. If we, we zero is default? I don't actually really know. I, actually, that would make sense if letter spacing is zero because we don't have, yeah, because the letter box, okay, okay, makes sense. Okay, so zero. So what we wanna do is tighten it, right? So we want them to sort of squish in in their inline so their width should kind of allow a little bit of overlap. So here we go. I'm gonna hold option. I'm gonna hit down on my keyboard because I have the number one selected here. And on DevTools, that's going to decrement by 0.1 or whatever, it's, gonna, it's a decimal value option down and let's watch our kerning. Look at that. Okay, so we've already gone from zero to 0.2. We get to see another letter. 0.3, we see Henri's entire name. Now if we come back here, let's let's get the E on Sierra Argyle Art here. Drop one more, drop two more. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do letter spacing half a pixel. Um, and I like how that looks. I don't, I don't think we're colliding or making any of this clash in a way that's not good still very legible okay so line height 1.2 and letter spacing negative half a pixel half a pixel value it's not very often that you use sub pixel values in css um, but they can be very handy when they when you need them so um, but be sure to test across browser you might not get the negative letter spacing like you thought in a less retina ready scenario or an engine that just doesn't draw sub pixel values so Anyway, this might be worth checking out. Uh, this, there could be um, a mismatch in designs across platform here because of this. So I'm gonna just gonna close some stuff up. We don't need to worry about body. We are gonna fix some stuff here. Um, what did I, this is fig caption. There we go. Boop, boop. Oh, there we go. Okay, here's our styles. Everything is great. I used pixels here for letter spacing. I use this a lot. I don't think M and Rem are are as effective here, especially when what I'm trying to do is a very pixel, like I'm trying to squeeze very, very minute amounts of space out of that. And so using pixels is gonna be one of my lowest units that I can sort of nudge something at. Whereas like rem and m, there's a lot of math and there can be rounding and anyway, that was a side tangent. Okay, so what do we do? We changed our descenders and our letter spacing. So we've tightened it up. I think we match our design a lot more. Excellent. Uh, we also said we had a sentinel issue. So this was our sentinel. We had inline size and block size. Oh, that's not our sentinel. Our sentinel is our after element. Here it is. Okay, we have inline size and block size. And we have inset end. This was another one of the killers, right? So this is like the same thing as the physical side of write. Um, because it's, you know, if you're handwriting letters in English or Latin, you know, you say the, you write the word word, um, you're going from left to right. So that's your inline is how your hand is going across as you put letters and words together. So we want inline end, right? This is the end of our scroll space. So the end of where I would be writing, uh, we want to append and move something in that particular side of its box. Okay. So we say inset end negative two, and that's sort of taking it out of the parent element and moving it over. And that's creating our extra space because our renderer does obey a size of an element, not necessarily the padding. Okay. Whatever. All we want to do is write some physical fallbacks for this. And if we put the physical fallbacks first, then any browser that doesn't understand logical properties or the logical property shorthands will just ignore them. But if it does understand them, uh, it will use them. So we'll just write these in here as uh, width is two rem, our height is 100%, and our uh, right is negative two rem. And that shouldn't have broken anything. Yeah, we get the exact same result. We do still have our little bug there, but if we go look, so here, Command Shift C, grab this figure, twirl it open. Here's the pseudo element we created, and here's its space it's consuming. You can see the job it's it's performing there. 
So kind of interesting, right? And it might be nice to use a custom property here as well where you could like um, help manage that. Oh, it looks like inset end has written a couple of extra properties for me. I don't really want bottom. Huh, I'll have to check out why inset end did that might be post CSS trying to help me out. Anyway, whatever. So that is fixed. We also have a bug where, okay, let's fix this hover item. I think we can fix the hover item by, I, I don't like that the whole thing scales up. I feel like the interactive portion is here. There's something weird about scaling text and like it kind of jiggles. Do you see the text jiggling? Here, let me do this zoom. Watch the text jiggle as it rests and snaps into place. Ah, oh, so annoying. Okay. Scaling text. It's, it's hard to make it look smooth. Uh, let's check this out. So we have our last child after right now. If we put this after on the friends list, uh, that will get it off of the element and no longer hover and have that effect. We also want to move the hover to, I want the hover to affect the picture instead of the whole. So let's move this under picture. And, oh wait, we can just do this. Oh no, we need the parent one. Oh, we could do an at nest. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna mess with it right now. There's a way to put this in here and it could be really nice. Um, I mean, that's nice enough right there. Okay, whatever, this is fine. So we want to transform scale on hover. Now we need to adjust this transition here, right? So now the figure isn't being animated. Our picture is being animated. Let's drop that there and we'll save. And we'll just hover over pictures. Okay, so our pictures now are what's hovering. And that totally got rid of our bug. It definitely looks nicer just scaling the circles. They just look more interactive. And that was what you're, that's the tap target too, right? So you're sort of like animating the tap target, bringing it towards their cursor, encouraging a click, uh, which I think makes sense. Okay, so we fixed that bug. I'm not gonna mess with it. Let's just leave it there. Great, okay, so we have a, so we want to add scroll snap and we want to get rid of an extra container. Great. So we're going to get rid of our extra container. Command X just does a cut on the line. And I'll pop in here and just give this one tab back. Probably drive people nuts that I don't use a linter. And I'll take all the styles in overflow X here. And they are now all styles that belong on our horizontal friends list, which honestly, that kind of makes sense. Look at all this stuff. It did all feel together to begin with, and now it is all together. So we have a display grid laying these things out. We get to put our styles on the thing that is the like visual container. Um, I think that's really nice. Where it sort of aligns things a little bit more towards I think how it how it looked, which is good. I like keeping things closer to how they look if I can. Okay, we have uh, refactored that. We still have a scrolling scenario. It looks great. It's still trapping our scroll exactly like we want. Let's do some scroll snapping. So we have overflow X, overflow scroll, or over scroll behavior X contain. We want to scroll snap, oh man, scroll snap type on X proximity. Okay, so what this says is we want to scroll snap on the X axis. Um, you know, use your best judgment. It's not required, so it's not like, it's not gonna force things to snap, like if it's stuck in between at the end, it's, it, anyway, Sometimes proximity can keep you from getting into awkward scenarios, but sometimes mandatory keeps them um, from ever getting into an awkward scenario. So pick the one that you like best. And now that we have a scroll snap uh, de declaration on the container, each child that we want to snap, and in this case, it's the direct descendant figure, needs to opt into this. And it can be done with a scroll snap align. It's just as like, hey, where do you want to align? And I wanted them to align on the left edge here um, so that's going to be start. So if we were talking about inline, inline start, again, like where did your handwriting start? That's where I want this particular thing to snap on each of these. Okay, so I hit save and look at that. Even though we have it set to proximity, it's still snapping the first item and the padding on that is making it kind of janky. So here, if I scroll, let's squeeze this tighter. If I scroll here, you can see that like I'm resting right here my elements are until I get to the end. The end just like free flows, right? Okay, we have some issues. Like that snapping issue is really annoying and it has a very, very specific resolution. And that is, well, let's just do it in DevTools. So we've got our 
um, scroll snap align. Okay, so here's what's happening. We have an alignment child and we have a container and the container is set to instruct like snap your children to the start. And so it lays out and says, hey, there's a child here to start, snaps it. And it notices after it's laid out with the padding that there's like a delta and it snaps it based on the delta. So we're seeing the effects of our padded scroll container negatively influencing the snap alignment of children. We have a way to get around that and it's called scroll padding. You might have seen scroll padding before and be like, scroll padding? Uh, I just put padding on something. Why would I scroll pad? Uh, and scroll padding is also a little deceiving in that it really only works on a scroll snap container. It should be called scroll snap padding. But naming things is hard and maybe there will be another use case for this. So we have a way out of this and that is scroll snap or scroll padding. So we're gonna do scroll Pat, scroll pad. Well, I'm going to go type this in DevTools because it's going to be a mouthful. We want scroll padding inline start. Oh, maybe I could have written it after all. Two rem. And boom, we see our fix already. So here's what we did. We said the scrollable zone that is also a snap zone should have an inline start amount of padding that essentially it shouldn't be part of the calculation of a snap of two rem, which is the same thing as our gap, which is the same thing as our spacing and our padding. So we've basically just pulled that right in. We should definitely make a custom property for that gap. We have two rem being repeated so much. That should be part of this refactor, but eh, whatever. Okay, so that'd be something if you want to optimize. That seems like a good lever someone might want to pull just to adjust those all at the same time and keep the harmony. Um, okay, so scroll padding inline start, that fixed our bug. So if I come over here to just play again, if I scroll softly, and look at now, we actually get this additional benefit, which is um, we're snapping no longer at the edge, we're snapping at the start, which is where the padding has always been, right? We, we, we load and we allude to some alignment, and as we scroll, we maintain it. That's really cool. I see a bug that's annoying me right now, and I don't know how much I'm gonna let it bug me. I'm gonna show you what it is. It's right here. You see it? Look, you see that peeking out? It's got, it's only that one. If I scroll over here and let this snap, look, none. Scroll over one more, none. Scroll over one more. There it is. I'm gonna try not to yell into your ear. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm not gonna chase that down right now. It's like this one is slightly larger than the others, but it doesn't look like it. 110. By 110, one, whoa, it is bigger. Oh, I was hovering it. <laughs> what? It wasn't obvious? <laughs> anyway, okay, whatever. Let's uh, move past that. We have scroll snapping. Snapping is working, it looks great. If, if the browser doesn't feature it, it's no big deal. We fixed any bug of when it just kind of initially starts and loads. Like, look, if we have enough space, there's no snapping. You can just access your friends. It's no big deal. But it's kind of nice when you're in a constrained space that you can keep these things looking really nice and aligned in there. I love scroll snap. Okay, cool. As long I like scroll snap on a horizontal, like as long as it's not my main scroller. Um, scroll hijacking is annoying. Keeping carousels in a nice place, I like that. That seems kind of meaningful. Um, all right, helps my eye like always find where whatever is snapped. We have one more thing to do, which is uh, do our gradient highlight. So let's work on that. The way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna switch our radial gradient, which we have going, let's find our radial gradient. Our radial gradient here is going from to top right. So it's starting at the bottom left and going to the top right from orange to deep pink. We're gonna change that to a conic gradient. The reason we're gonna change this to a conic, conic gradient, so conic gradients are like if you take a, a, a clock hand and go around a circle, for example, and, and you're like wiping the color around the, the circle there. And if we have the start and end of our circle of this conic gradient is orange, then it will look like there's a highlight. And then all the way around the rest of the circle, it can be deep pink. And when we have that point, that's right there, we can then adjust just that one and watch our highlight go around our circle because conic gradient is just following the position of that uh, start and end of a consistent circular gradient. Okay, let's do it. So we have a conic gradient and, oh man, I'm not gonna remember how to do this syntax, but maybe I will. 
I'm, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, yes, yes, okay. So from, we want to say, where is it coming from? And in this case, we're going to start with, um, like, let's see, what's our rotation here? It's probably, it's 180, it's like two something. Let's just try 200 degrees. Um, yes. Good old, oh, I have in my notes here, 0.6 turn. And I think that's because that is uh, just a handy way of saying it's like here's 0.5 turn and here's 0.6 turn. Could be 0.65. Anyway, okay, so we have 0.6 turn. We'll swap that later for our dynamic variable because this is essentially what we want to make dynamic. And after this, um, it gets pretty straightforward. We just need three colors. So we're going to say orange, deep pink to orange. Let's save. And there is perceptively no difference in that. Is I'm scroll snapping back because we didn't put our fix into the code here. Scroll snap type proximity scroll um, padding inline start to rim. There we go. Forgot to bring that over. That's the only bummer sometimes about working in DevTools is you might forget to bring over your changes. All right. Radial gradient, just change it to a conic gradient. Let's lay this out just so you can see it a little easier because I think that's a neat trick. Boom, and here's our multiple backgrounds. Okay, conic gradient, we're gonna set this to a variable now because it's essentially what we want to be changing and we'll set this to um, degrees or here, just angle. Angle to or 0.6 turn. So basically, if angle is not present, default to 0.6 turn, we should see no change. All right, our CSS is essentially ready for the JavaScript it's gonna to take to figure out the, the angle of the mouse hover in context to the circle here. So we're gonna do some JavaScript in this video. Uh, I love JavaScript, let's write some. And these are my notes. I have written it already, uh, but I'm gonna try to write a lot of it as if I didn't write it already so that you can stumble along with me. I think the stumbling is fun. I'm gonna bring over one um, file though, or one function. So I'm gonna come over here. I've got a JavaScript file, I just never use it. So here's JavaScript, all modern and ready to go. And the, here's the function I'm just gonna straight copy and we can explain it here. Close my file there. All right, get angle. Why is this highlighted red? I'm gonna figure it out later. And let's make sure that get angle, uh, let's see, it's being loaded, or is it? We have our index, let's check our head tag and make sure our script, yep, script type module deferred. Okay, great. So since we're a module, we're also not gonna see our function in the global scope, which is good. I don't think we want that. So here's our index.js, get angle, we could, I guess, console log. Or here, debugger, boop. If you come over here and reload, look at that, it just pretty much pulls your file open. So anytime you write debugger and you run JavaScript code, the dev tools will, um, will, go will stop there for you and pause and, and say, here's, here's where you wanted to be paused, uh, tell us what to do next. And in this case, I'm just gonna hit play. It pretty much just opened up my file for me. All right, and close that. Okay, and I'll get rid of debugger can feel confident that we have that function available for us. Okay, so this function is, it's gonna take an element, and in this case, we're gonna send it a picture. So it's gonna be this circular shape, and we're gonna send it the event coordinates of the mouse of X and Y. And with the shape and the bounds here, so we're gonna get the bounds of our element, and we're going to do some math to find out if we're kind of above or below. This is DX and DY, or delta X and delta Y. So what's the delta between the mouse position and the actual X and Y of this element on the, the page here. So we're just kind of taking these absolute units and determining um, whether it's going that way or this way or that way. And down here is where the math is done to sort of convert your deltas uh, and use you know math pi to figure out an angle out of all that information. I don't know all, you know how that actually all works uh, other than it worked great in the way that I want to use it here. Sorry, my nose. Okay. Here's where we're gonna get into some vanilla JavaScript. So we're gonna say document.querySelector. We're gonna do our best to set up one uh, event listener on this whole element, right? We just are interested in the hover. Everybody's interested in the hover in this particular thing. So we'll get one listener and then distribute the work after that. So our listener is going to be on our element called horizontal friends list. 
Make sure to put a dot there because it's a class name we're selecting on. Great. So there's query selector and we're going to say add event listener to uh, hover or no mouse over mouse move because we want to continuously get this event. I hate those pop ups get out of my face sublime. Um, thank you for all the event information, but I just don't need it right now. Uh, mouse move. OK, so on mouse move, we're going to get that event and we're going to do something with it. All right. The first thing that we're going to do is essentially check to see if the event is coming from a source we care about or not. So since we're opting into one listener on the whole layout, all mouse moves in the entire thing are going to be bubbling the event up to the top. And they're going to be like, the events are going to be like, I'm hovering the image. I'm hovering the fig caption. I'm hovering the figure. I'm hovering the container. I'm hovering the fig caption. It's just going to keep repeating these things. And we're really only interested when they're hovering the picture because the picture is the thing we're going to rotate the highlight around. So we need to figure out a way to filter out those. That's the hardest part about making one listener for many things is isolating the event. Reasons people might be using RxJS or something like that is they can take a whole bunch of these and filter them uh, quite simply. They can filter the stream and isolate it. Uh, anyway, streams, they're cool. If you haven't studied them, I love streams and just uh, observables in general. I love the concept. Okay, so we have add event listener. We need to say, say okay, if the target, which we don't have here, so it's gonna e.target, dot node name. So here's our first check. We're going to say, hey, the node name is image. Well, here we want to say if it's not equal to image or the uh, if it's not the e dot target dot closest. And this is we're going to put a horizontal friends list. Wow, Sublime, you are really popping those things up into my world, aren't you? We're going to return. So what we're seeking to do here um, is early escape. Essentially, if the name of this is not image, so apparently I want to hover on the image. I'll have to check this out in a second. Oh, because the image is helping me isolate more about the figure. Like, let's look at our HTML here. We have a picture and an image. So I'm looking at the image. We might be able to look at picture. Picture is what's being hovered. Well, we'll, we'll check it out here in a second. Okay. And so if it's not an image, and if it's not within a container called horizontal friends list, then escape. Else, we're basically going to use our function. So we're going to go create a variable called angle, and we're going to say get angle. And in here, we're going to say e.target and e.client x and e.client y, because that's essentially what we wanted to pass in here. So um, this is going to receive our element. It's going to go get the bounds. It's going to find a delta, and it's going to turn an angle. That angle we want to use in that conic gradient. And so here is where it all kind of comes together. So we can say e.target, because that's the thing that's being hovered, dot closest picture. Ah, this is how I solved that then. So I'm looking for hovers on the image, but then I'm going to go find the picture. And when I find the picture, I'm going to um, use the attribute style map because I'm setting something in line on this element. This is a really handy way to do it because I can say dot set angle with a nice um, object literal here or string literal, literal degrees. Great. And if I remember right, I need an offset of 90 degrees. Okay, let's save. Let's hover. I have errors. Angle is not defined on line 17. Right here, angle return math. There. We have our highlight. Let's zoom in. Whoa, that is a freaky picture. Here. You see it? I see a little bit of a bug there. It does. It works better on the image than it does on the border. See? Okay. Let's change e.target.node name um, to picture. Okay. Whoa, it's jumpy. Oh, because it's not looking at image. It's almost like we need to be watching image and picture and anything else uh, gets blown away. Okay, well, here's how things happen. So we've got this or 
this or this. All right, so if the image is not a picture or not an image, or if the target is not a picture, it's not an image, and it's not within this uh, container, we don't care about it. Otherwise, go calculate it. So hopefully we're getting a richer interaction here between our picture and we aren't, because this is like, these two need to come together, I think. So let's do this. We are definitely off the cuff from what I thought we were gonna do. Great, how's that? Excellent, so essentially what we did is we said, we're exclusively interested in hovers on picture and image. If you're not a picture and image, go home. If you aren't within the horizontal friends list for whatever reason you're coming in here and this target isn't in here, just go home. We don't care, return, escape early. Otherwise, if you are hovering on a picture and an image, go ahead and get that angle, offset it a little bit by something that's just known ahead of time and go set the style on that. So we're using attribute style map. Let's, let's just do this because it looks like we're getting a little tight on space in here. It's a big code. Okay, boom. If we wanted to, we could sort of like destructure this into a few of our things and get rid of all the E dots, but some, some folks like that. So I'm gonna leave it. Um, actually, I'm gonna get rid of it because I kind of like doing all the breaking down because we're gonna take target. We're only interested in target, client X and client Y, right? So if we go get all the E dots, E dot target, E dot target, E dot target, client X, client Y, there we go. Save. Ah, and what's cool too is when we leave, look at our highlight stays. I mean, maybe that's not cool. Maybe a designer would want it to like animate and reset, but I, I think that's pretty sweet. Um, okay, wow, that turned out super cool. Love that effect. It's very magical. You could probably um, hover in this whole space and try to have it set an angle as well. I wonder if it would be as accurate as we are hovering on this square right here. Anyway, um, that is everything that I wanted to refactor today. Um, I hope that was interesting. We really nitpicked a couple of things. We nitpicked descenders. We nitpicked um, some logical properties, or we I suppose we provided some fallback. We nitpicked how much DOM we were using. Usually it's okay to have an extra div, but in this case, uh, it was wasteful. And we reduced the amount that we're gonna deliver and have to mentally think about and have to select. So the whole component is actually really kind of secluded right now nicely into its own world. Everything is wrapped into a horizontal friends list. Pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I hope you like these videos. This is kind of, this is day-to-day -day reality stuff for the front-end web developers, especially if you're like a UX engineer and you're really sweating the small stuff and you're trying to make high quality, tangible, buttery interfaces. You have to just get in here like this and spend time and things get messy. This was really messy. This target not node name is not equal to a picture or it's not equal to image uh, grouped together, you know, with an and and then an or. It's pretty bizarre. I wonder if we could even refactor that to just keep this. Like, what was I really ignoring in the other one? Let's see. Uh, I don't see any misfires. We have a very particular filter here. I'm calling, oh, look at that. If I hover on the fig caption, I kind of like that though. So that way if I'm down here, it's still promoting where the interactive area is or it's just still included. Anyway, okay, right, we're sweating small stuff. So at this point, I'm like really getting picky about like what's the interactive uh, painted space so that I can make sure that that's uh, what is tangible looking to the user so that I can encourage and get an appropriate click, right? All right, cool. Well, uh, we have more coming. In fact, I wanted to um, tease the next thing we're gonna be making, which is, I'm gonna have to find it. I'm gonna have to find it. It's right here. Yes. Okay, so check out this layout. This is, it should look really familiar. This is just a bunch of the things that we just made. Look, we have a figure with an image and a fig caption. A figure with an image and a fig caption inside of a scroll snapping carousel. Like, look at this one. This one's at the end. This one's in the middle. And this one's at the start. 
So we're going to use, and then we're just going to add a little sticky header, or probably just a regular header. So anyway, we're going to take what we built with Instagram's mini friends layout and go build a, this is a, I think this is Google TV. Um, you know, you're perusing movies. I was looking at the TV show Lock and Key, which if you haven't watched, it's a fantastic um, like horror show. Anyway, and I was looking for things similar and I was like, I've made this layout. This layout is so, it's everywhere. And so we're gonna kind of make this screen. We'll see if we can do it pretty quick since we have some stuff to piggyback on. Anyway, I had a blast. I hope you had fun and subscribe. Let's make more videos and tell me what you want. If you wanna see some stuff, if something's like, struggling for you and, and you want to see how I approach it and, and how I struggle through it as well and how I'm debugging it, send it my way and we'll do it live on here and hopefully everyone can grow as you see the reality of how layout and front end comes together, uh, which is it's a little bit of a mess, but in the end, uh, the user won't notice. They're just going to care if it's buttery and tangible. Take care, y'all. I'll see you later. Bye.